Viewers, my friends, it's almost upon us. The first ballot will be cast in less than 72 hours. Let's tonight cut to the chase. Let's not confuse, addle our minds with what is not necessary. The BJP needs just 273 seats to return to power. Don't forget that, viewers. 272 is the halfway mark. 273 is a simple majority. While the Prime Minister talks about Char Par, and while we all obsess about whether the BJP will fall short of the mark or cross it or not, the fact is that even if the BJP does not get more than 330 or 340 or 350 seats, it won't lose the election. All the BJP needs is to get to 273 for the Prime Minister to equal Nehru's record and return three consecutive times to power as Prime Minister. As things stand, the BJP, barring some unforeseen happenstance, looks well placed thanks to the North. Yes, viewers, the North, the geography. Here, out of 224 seats, barring Gujarat, Bengal and the Northeast, the BJP holds 90% of those seats, viewers. That's almost 201 or 202 seats. Till the opposition alliance doesn't dent the BJP in the North, it has no chance of stopping the BJP from getting a simple majority. Now, why am I telling you all this? It is because here in the North, the BJP has done something that most political parties have never been able to achieve. That is consolidate the Hindu vote across caste lines, around emotional issues linked directly to community pride. The Ram Mandir in Ayodhya being the foremost. And that's the reason why Prime Minister Modi, even two days ahead of the first phase, has continued to contrast his party, the BJP's self-proclaimed devotion to Lord Ram, to the alleged dereliction of the opposition. Realizing that Ram is the proverbial Hindu Hriday Samrat all across India, Prime Minister Modi questioned Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee's commitment to Ram today barely a day after accusing Rahul Gandhi and Stalin of the same. Now viewers, if the Hindu vote remains stable in the north, the BJP is assured to get the same number of seats it got in 2019 and roughly the same number in the north that it got in 2014. Viewers, it'll only be around 70 short. And with Gujarats, 26 out of 26, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Gujarat, as I said, Bengal, Orissa, Northeast, the South, all remaining, the BJP can only hope for a bounty. Viewers, it is therefore why the BJP believes and its principal campaigner believes that Ram is the glue. Not just in the north. They are convinced even in Rameshwaram, almost the tip of India in the south. And viewers, of course, in Bengal, northeast, Odisha, everywhere. And therefore, viewers, Modi's constant stress on this fault line. Listen. ये पहली रामनवमी है जब अयोध्या में भव्य राम मंदिर में राम लला विराजमान हो चुके हैं मुझे पता है टीएमसी ने हमेशा की तरह यहां रामनवमी उत्सव को रोकने की पूरी कोशिश की सारे षडयंत्र किए 
लेकिन जीत सत्य की ही होती है इसलिए कोर्ट से अनुमति मिल गई है और कल पूरी श्रद्धा और भक्ति के साथ राम नवमी की शोभा यात्राएं निकलेगी साथियों पीएमसी के बंगाल में किस चीज की परमिशन मिलेगी किसकी परमिशन नहीं मिलेगी ये कानून तय नहीं करता ये पीएमसी के तोलाबाज और गुंडे तय करते हैं बंगाल में राम नवमी की शोभा यात्रा की परमिशन नहीं मिलती उसके लिए श्रद्धालुओं को कोर्ट जाना पड़ता है लेकिन राम नवमी और दुर्गा पूजा की शोभा यात्राओं पर पत्थर फेंकने वालों को पीएमसी सरकार ने पूरी परमिशन दे रखी है As is implicit from Modi's words, the Prime Minister is hoping that BJP's Ram Card will also strike a note with Bengal's Hindu voters. The PM's cause has been coincidentally helped by the courts that have rejected moves to block Ram Navami processions in some pockets of the state, citing the possibility of law and order problems. So, viewers, the courts today said that these Ram Navami. processions will go on subject to a few conditions maximum 200 participants for ram navami processions while i can't understand viewers why they are capped it's not as if any other denominations functions are also capped by numbers i mean no one imposes no court in this country imposes a number on the size of the congregation any church in any masjid in our country but of course in secular india the court will do so but that's a completely different matter views anyhow the ram navami procession can go on limited to 200 participants display of any weapons barred during the processions only one vehicle for the idol of lord ram can be used in a rally court warns against the raising of provocative slogans organizers have ordered to take out rallies on separate days VHV for instance will hold the procession on April 17 in Howrah Anjani Putra Sena their procession will go out on 21st in Howrah The BJP's Ram card has succeeded because the opposition has at least in the public eye been guilty of keeping a distance from important symbols of Ram bhakti most crucially the Ram mandir viewers You will note you will record that the ram janambhoomi movement totally recast the politics of the north catapulting the bjp to power but viewers despite knowing this the opposition has chosen to at least publicly in their declarations keep an arm length from ram for example karnataka's minister k n rajna He said BJP's Ram Mandir campaign is purely political. This is Mr. Rajana. BJP kept two dolls in a tent and called it Lord Ram. This is what was said by him. And the context was of course the inauguration of the Ram Temple and the invitations that had been given out personally to various opposition leaders to attend. Then of course there is a DMK leader who says Ram birth is a myth. BJP is replacing history with mythology. Uh, viewers, do these leaders ever question the beliefs of the followers of other religions? Would they say the same about the gods, the deities of other faiths that they are myths, never born this that the other? No viewers they won't. They won't. Ramendu Roy TMC MLA said no Hindu should visit unholy Ram Mandir to offer puja. Why? Why should the TMC MLA say this? He went on to say only a show of peace has been built in Ayodhya, a show of peace. 
The question that has to be asked is whether this seeming antipathy to an icon of Hindu hearts and the PM's Ram hater barbs singe the opposition or not. Or simply put, why will the majority community vote for parties that have traditionally not taken pride in their religious symbols? This is the basic question, viewers, that we are going to ask about 72 hours ahead of the first phase. Let's open this up. Let's not delay this conversation. Sanjay Jha, it's a very simple question. We all know the politics of, as you know, the rise and fall of political parties. We all understand how the BJP has managed to consolidate this Hindu vote. And I'm asking you, why hasn't a party like the Congress learnt its lessons? Why should Hindus, Mr. Jha, choose to vote for a party like the Congress that has traditionally not taken pride in the religious symbols of the majority community, for instance? That's what the BJP will ask you. Can you furnish an answer? The Ram Mandir is a matter of faith to millions of Hindus and the Supreme Court ordered its construction. There was no reason why the Congress party should have stayed away. Okay, Rahul, let me answer you with two, uh, two basically key points. Number one, that I think the Prime Minister looks definitely very disturbed and disconcerted. Yesterday, I watched him on ANI and he was openly lying on electoral bonds. He was openly lying. I mean, today he's been fact-checked and I can't imagine a prime minister of a country whose government has been shamed by the Supreme Court on electoral bonds for being opaque, for being corrupt, for being criminal, for being a crony capitalist, trying to say it will actually, you know, stop the black money. Sorry, you'll regret it apparently. I mean, I can't imagine a bigger farce than that. But let me address your principal question. I'll tell you why he's worried. Go back, Rahul, to the survey recently done by Lokniti CSDS. You know, what are the four key issues in the minds of the people? I live in Maharashtra. Rahul, you have lived in Mumbai for a long time. Trust me, Maharashtra is going to give you a stunning result in 2024 Lok Sabha. And whoever wins Maharashtra is likely to be there in Delhi. Here is the point. The Lokniti survey clearly has said that the four principal issues that dominate the average voter across the country. One, un unemployment. Second, price rise. Third, development. Fourth, corruption. At number five and six are Ram Mandir and Hindutva. Between them, they aggregate 10%. And they're coming at five and six. Clearly, the message is out. You know, everyone who's following <clears throat> politics knows what has happened to the BJP Rahul. A lot of them believed, and including BJP supporters, I think two of them are there on the on the program. They believed that Pran Pratishta on January 22nd meant that the election was done and dusted. As they have discovered to their extreme rude surprise, India is a beautiful, diverse country. And every state has got its own way of looking at the way they want their government to perform. When you look at the fundamentals, this government has flopped. And the data tells you that 55% of people believe corruption has gone up. And it's not just electoral bond corruption. It's across the board. People are seeing that this government has actually fooled us. And I'll keep saying that. June 4th, the famous Pathan dialogue will come alive. Okay. And I think sure. Mr. Modi is a sharp political leader. He's sensing the change in the mood of the people. And you know, can you imagine? And you know, after this, I don't want to say anything further. But when Narendra Modi called the Congress manifesto a Muslim League document, I actually, if I had any respect for him, that went not just to zero, but diminished. And what was he talking about? 
can you imagine how desperate he's become that he said every page of the congress manifesto was a document that was going to divide india is paying more to manrega dividing india is giving job reservations to women dividing india is giving money to the unemployed youth as a right to apprenticeship dividing india is providing women in a family rupees 1 lakh dividing india i mean what a shameful comment from the head of the largest democracy okay. in this country there is panic okay. and the results so of let me let show. me bring in let me bring in the other side you see you are talking about providing providing the bjp has already provided by the way have done nothing so so one second no one this is the same sanjay ja one second sir i'll just ask you a couple of follow up questions rhetorically not posed to you just to the viewers this is the same sanjay ja viewers yes. this is the same sanjay ja who sat here on this channel on my show and said that the bjp will be losing the congress will be winning chatisgarh madhya pradesh and rajasthan the same sanjay ja views well many posts and how he got it wrong That's all right. How he got it wrong? That's all right. Many pollsters, he said, Maybe were saying that. Around. Could it be the CSDS have also got it wrong? After all, viewers, I'll ask you. And you Google, sitting in your homes, you probably have a phone. You might have your uh, son and daughter next to you who might already be on their computer. Just find out how many people each day have visited the Ram Mandir since its inauguration on January twenty second. Does CSDS capture this nonsense? Yours, I'll give you that answer. But first, tweet me the number. Let's see how many of you actually engage with this, and you will find out. You'll be astonished to know the numbers, viewers. It goes into crores. Yes, January twenty second till today. How many? Just check. So I don't know what the CSDS is talking about. That it is of no consequence. When you travel to a destination, viewers, you are doing three things. You are spending money, hard-earned money, which, according to Sanjay Jha, is so hard to come by these days. That is savings. Why would you be doing it if it didn't matter to you? Of course, Rahul Gandhi will say because you can have free, free drinks there, as he said once about Kashi. Nonetheless, that's a different matter. So, viewers. people are spending their hard earned money they have spent their hard earned money contributing to the making of the ram mandir not a rupee from the state exchequer went into that and we are saying that they don't care about the ram mandir it comes very low on their priority list who is this csds viewers there are dime a dozen of these organizations at one time it was headed by a person who had joined the congress party do you know this viewers How do you know that legacy doesn't extend still into the CSDS? I'm not. I'm not in any way rubbishing anyone. I'm only saying it's just one of the many out there. Just like Sanjay Jha said, it is one of the many who told me that the Congress was sweeping the north. So viewers, there goes that defence. Then let's just to talk a little bit about the electoral bonds that Sanjay Jha has again raised. Yes, it was struck down by the Supreme Court. and yes the supreme court is part viewers and i'm saying it with great responsibility of a news of an old system that has come back where you will not even know who gave what to whom so we are back to that old system and you just have to ask the election commission how much money is being recovered on a daily basis they put the number out yesterday just google it where is that money coming from if there is no black money in the system viewers think about that and if it was such a corrupt instrument that sanjay jha is talking about why is the congress allowed it or used it to collect 1300 crores should it not return that money well viewers you think about one all these second, things I'll, but one second i, I only i have only place rhetoric i am not pointing these questions at anybody Sanjay Jha, because I know, because I know that your response will again be a bunch of water boutry. So one minute, I'll bring, I'll come back to you. Let the others have a crack at this. Okay. Let the others have a crack at this. Karan Verma, before I bring in the BJP spokesperson and before I bring in the other critic of the BJP, Professor Monojit Mondol, 
Karmana, what do you make of Sanjay Jha's response and the Prime Minister's principal focus today? You know, very factual and very brief, uh, Rahul. Uh, somebody, first of all, needs to cancel Sanjay Jha's OTT subscription. He's clearly binging on a lot of spy thrillers like Pathan and God knows what all to come up with such lies. Uh, number one, when he talks about electoral bonds, in 2013, just one statistic, Rahul, 85% of Congress's funds, which was 3,300 crores at that time, was from unknown sources. I mean, imagine Sanjay Jha waxing eloquent about talking about transparency. This is the system on which electoral bonds is an improvement where we at least know where the money is coming from and where it's going. And it's all in the formalized system. So that is number one. Then he talks of unemployment. Periodic Labor Force Survey tells us that unemployment is at a record low of 3.1%. Inflation is 5%. It used to be double digit for 22 months during the UPA regime. Pranam Mukherjee and P. Chidambaram used to pass the football to each other saying the other is responsible for inflation. So that is what you left in the first place. Then he talks about foreign exchange economy, $650 billion foreign exchange. Just this month, Sanjay Jha, GST collections is the second highest ever. I mean, in which parallel universe are you residing? To come up and say that, you know, these are the issues and people are starving. People are quite well off. And as far as the Mandir economy is concerned, from Virasat to Vikas, Rahul, this is a model. 3 lakh crores is what our temple economy is worth. Just the last month, as per CAIT, trade worth 50,000 crores occurred in Ayodhya itself. It has the potential to create 1 million tourist jobs this year itself. So for all those who used to say whether temple can give us jobs or not, Today, our economy is centered around that and it has received a serious, serious boost. It has sentiments attached. You clearly don't understand sentiments when you can file an affidavit and say Ram does not exist. You did not even visit on 22nd January. Your leaders can visit Babar's tomb who says I will be an infidel. I will massacre all infidels. You can visit their tomb. You don't visit the Ram Mandir. So clearly you don't have sentiments. But at least, at least face the hard numbers, how people are getting jobs, how our economy is growing leaps and bounds because of this. Okay, uh, let me bring in Professor Mondol. Professor Mondol, the fact of the matter is this, that today, whether you like it or not, the Bengal administration has been tied in with an attempt to block Ram Navami, which was sanctioned by the court. This is a fact. The, no, no, no. The, Why also... would you deny so many Hindus an opportunity to take pride yeah, nobody. The Bengal in a government, festival. The Bengal government will never deny any real Hindu, the practitioner of Ram Lala's ideology, to go with Ram Navarro celebration. But those goons who were creating mayhem one year ago, investigated now by NIA, nothing has actually happened. Because NIA now understand this, most of the people who are caught nabbing by the Bengal police are from BJP. The Bengal government will do their best to restrain these hooligans in the name of Hinduism to celebrate Ram Naomi the way they wanted to do, by mm. playing DJ, dancing with brandishing gun and sword. Even the court has come down heavily upon these people that you are not allowed to take any form of weapon, whether sword or gun. That's why lies the victory of the Bengal government. I mean, you had to some way the other, Mr. Rahul Shankar, cast a special on the Honorable High Court of Calcutta. That why tapping on the number? Because when the court have now realized that what they were doing last year, this BJP goons and hooligans, by you know visiting a particular communities, uh, you know, uh, you know, gully and brandishing the sword, they are responsible for creating this mayhem, and they might create this mayhem. So court has reasonable apprehension to cap them, to restrain them, and Bengal government, I think, has won. There lies the victory. Yes, anyone who wishes to celebrate Lord Rama's ideology peacefully, even the TMCs do celebrate. Even normal, common people do celebrate Ram Naomi. Nobody creates this kind of mayhem. Nobody creates this kind of Allah Bala. This has been done for years, for thousands of years. People okay. have been celebrating Ram Naomi in this land. Nothing has happened. Nothing of, the, nothing of this kind of hype has been done. It is because of BJP's brandishing of swords and guns this kind of hype has been created and the government has to come in. Though the government is now actually virtually run by the Election Commission of India. So you also blame the Election Commission of India for you know, accepting this ban, accepting this capping. Okay. You can't do that. Let me bring yeah, in the yeah, BJP yeah, spokesperson to respond to Professor Mondol. Respond Professor, uh, to Professor Mondol to Insina. 
Well, good evening, Rahul. Good evening, everybody. You know, leaders like Mamta Banerjee draw their inspiration clearly, very clearly from Sirajit Dola and Hussein Shaheed Sohrawardi. And the only inspiration seems to be to subjugate Hindu population and Hindu sentiments. You would recall that last year there was unbridled violence against Hindus during Ram Naomi, as a result of which on 27th April 2023, based on the initial report of a fact-finding committee led by, you know, a retired judge from Patna High Court, it was the High Court, the Calcutta High Court, which transferred their case to NIA. And in July last year, the Supreme Court had, uh, had basically quashed Mamta Banerjee's plea against, uh, you know, giving the case to NIA. So please don't, uh, it was not our decision to bring the NIA. It was validated by both the Calcutta High Court and Calcutta High Court and the Supreme Court. Now, how many times has Vamta Banerjee been reprimanding on the, uh, reprimanded on this issue? You would recall that a few years ago, she had major problems with, with uh, you know, the, the, the Shara immersion taking place along with, along with Muharram. And so she banned uh, the, the Shara procession. Again, the Cal Calcutta High Court had, had intervened and ruled in favor of, uh, you know, the, the immersion taking place on the same day. In June 2021, it was the Calcutta High Court which, uh, you know, gave the case to NHRC, which, uh, which brought in NHRC to investigate the case of violence against Hindus post post uh, poll in 2021. So Mamta Banerjee is a repeat offender. You know, it is this mentality of Mamta Banerjee. And, and by the way, I need to bring in what has happened in neighboring neighboring Jharkhand today. Okay. You know, when, when, when police was checking out through drones, it, at least six buildings stone pulls, you know, stones in large numbers were recovered, which were potentially going to be employed to attack Ram Naomi processions. Now, this is what happens not just in Mamta Banerjee's Bengal. This is a common occurrence in many Indy Alliance. Uh, okay, let know, me quickly bring in Professor Mondo. This is the result of... Big accusations of being made by Mr. Sinha, backed mm -hmm. by fact. But let me, Professor Mondol, ask you a simple question. Your MLA said no Hindu should visit unholy Ram Mandir to offer the puja. And this person was Ramendu Roy. I'm quoting him exactly. His quote is going to come up on your screen. Only a showpiece has been built in Ayodhya. What will you say now when I tell you that 1.7 lakh pilgrims on a daily basis are visiting the Ram Mandir? More would have, more would have, except that the BJP... UP government has put a cap. So, is Ramendu Roy completely, completely and utterly in contempt of Hindu sentiments? First of all, I'm not surprised by the, the baggage of lies spoken by my good friend. No, no, friend please respond to the question I asked. No, 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 I'll, I'll, no, no he, I have to rebut him because he was misquoting Mamtadi. <coughs> he was distorting facts about Mamtadi. But I'm not surprised because that's the, their prime minister also does the same thing as right. my good friend. And, and you are honest to God. Out. And you are honest to God when you talk about the BJP. Everything, and, everything. And more honest than a good reporter like you and some of the BJP spokesmen. Right. I have a minute 30 on the I, show. No, no. Let, let, so get to the point. Ramindu Roy, the TMC MLA said, he's on record, no Hindu should visit unholy Ram Mandir to offer puja, but the Hindus have offered puja in record numbers. Your narrative might be suiting because of what he has said. But nobody is bothered about Nandu Rai. Whoever wants How to is it my narrative? The statement yeah, has been made by Ramendu Roy. You have okay. been visibly, visibly cheesed okay. because of the Kakana High Viewers, order. look at your screens. You are, you are questioning the Kakana Look at your, order. look at your, look at, listen. I can question, I can question, I can question any judgment. I can question any judgment. One second. Okay, don't get so worked up. Don't get so worked up. Professor Mondol, don't get so worked up. Particular judge. I'm naming that particular judge. Don't get so worked up. Don't, don't get so worked up. You are questioning the intent of the justice. I am not questioning the intent of the justice. I am con no, no, no. I am only contesting the point that was made. Okay, okay, okay. I, I can't, I can't speak over you, sir, because you are just shouting and you are losing your rag. Calm down, sir. Calm down. Be, be calm. Be calm. There is a difference. There is a difference. I am stating the fact. Okay, you are telling the facts. Okay, now let me tell you viewers, Ramendu Roy, TMC MLA, that quote is on your screens. No Hindu should visit unholy Ram Mandir to offer puja. Please check the details. 1.7 lakh a day. And the only reason that number is 1.7 lakh and not more is because there is a cap. 
and therefore I'm asking viewers, has the Prime Minister's constant jibes, constant attacks on the opposition, labelling them Ram haters, singe the opposition in this first phase and the remaining phases? It's the principal question. I don't know if you were satisfied by the opposition spokespeople's answers. I leave it at that. 